Yeah, maybe I can do it. Claim, I got it on I'll, the I'll, I'm going to claim the host. And it is recording. Outstanding. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again. It's just like David Koresh. Come on in and warm yourself by the fire. And Jim Jones, let's have a glass of tea. We're going to go out on a limb with this one as I stroll around Walmart and talk big shit as I thought might be the leader of some kind of spiritual movement in America. Nay, the world. So here we go. Scarlett's laughing at me. No, I just coughed. No, she just coughed. <laughs> All right, here we go. I've been thinking about a lot of things today, and, and, and a lot of it, I made a practice today of going through and talking to certain people, and I told them why they were important to me. It's been an immensely rewarding experience. They say, you know, you might not ever have time to tell somebody, and they might be gone. So today, I took time, and anyone I talked to on the phone, I tried to remind them why they were important to me. All of them have important things going on, and sometimes it comes across a little bit heavy. But it's been an immensely rewarding experience and it has resulted in me having a really good day. That is something that I think a lot of people struggle with. How do I have a good day? How do I get to enjoy things? Well, it says in the Grog Alder, let not evil lessen thy love. <laughs> Sometimes that's what we do. We go through the day, somebody don't act right, somebody doesn't say something right, somebody hurts our feelings, we don't understand why this is going on. <laughs> Maybe you should just fucking tell them why they're important to you. And just move the goalpost on any kind of interpersonal argument. Move the goalpost. Change the whole playing field. It's not against the rules to do that. <laughs> when we get wrapped up in our own thoughts, I heard a lady ask a question of a speaker. She says, when I'm trying to meditate, I don't know how to calm my thoughts. His reply was, you must be careful with that. You can't smooth rough water with a flat iron. You got to look at your thoughts as if they're birds chattering outside the window. What a brilliant way to observe all of it. Because once we do that, once we understand that all of these thoughts running through our minds are no more make up who we are than somebody's opinion of us. We are the presence behind those thoughts. We are so much more impressive, important, capable <laughs> than all of these crazy thoughts we think on a given basis, on a daily basis about any given subject. But we get wound up in it, don't we? We get sucked into it quick. What are they going to think? What are they going to say? Well, they can say what they want. They can think what they want because not any of it changes a single thing about the quality of who you are. And all of us that have jumped into also true at some point made the decision to go against the grain of the entirety of what the rest of the world thinks. Primarily the people all around us. And I've said it before, we're the prime example of what it means to be Austria. Are we going to be crippled by the opinions of others? to stifle our ability to do great and good works in this world, to cultivate the gifts we've been given to become something more, to think ourselves into success, not simply inserting positive thoughts into an incessant stream of negativity, but actually changing it, removing ourselves, taking ourselves out of that thought process and then changing it. See, that's how it all happens. That's how we change the reality. That's when I say, when I say you change your thoughts, you change your reality. That's how you do it. You espouse positive ideals. You tell people why they're important to you. You change your thoughts. Because everyone knows there's some rough times in this world. We find ourselves in tough spots. We find ourselves dealing with immense pain. How do we do that? Where's the tool to do that? Where's it saying the Lord how to do that? Fall down and cry? Stand up and sacrifice an enemy? <laughs> and yet if you look closely, you'll see Loki whispering into the ear of blind Hoder, take a shot at the center of someone else's world and calling it a worshipful thing. That's ego. Some folks would want to call it a false ego, <coughs> but I call it an ego. So do all kinds of people. The point of it is, whatever you want to call it, it's that perception of yourself 
as your thoughts run through your mind. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. How do we get out of that? <laughs> Look at those thoughts as if they're birds outside, chattering outside the window. One of the other most important things in dealing or becoming also true or trying to live a life that's so radically different and taking responsibility for your actions, especially if you are in pain, we remove ourselves from the thought process, but then there's a real, slow, powerful, strong realization that in this moment, the only one that we have, not in the past, not in the future, all of those things that we read about are happening. It's not a mechanical construction of this, this, and this may be who I am, or this, this, and this will result in my success. All of those things, limitless opportunities, all of the stories and the lore are happening inside us every minute of every day. In each minute, we have the opportunity or the option to determine where it goes next. Maybe not where it goes, but certainly how well we can handle it, how well it can be successful, limitless choices to each step we take. <laughs> it's not all far away. It's not some far distant land. Our ancestors are not in some far away location. They're right next to us, separated by a veil, and mostly that veil of our own thoughts. <laughs> Those are powerful high-minded practices. Those are powerful high-minded ideals. But those are the kind of things that if you take them to heart and try to put them into practice in your life, you really can step off into something much more magnificent than you can imagine. And I dare you, I challenge you, why don't you imagine what you're going to look like if you're no longer hanging on to that pain and resentment and those ideas which brought you so painfully to a crossroads that you had to change the very foundation of the faith that you believe in? What happens when you let go of that? What do you look like? What do you become? Well, I'm here to tell you, the sky's the limit and you can become what you want to become. Thank you for joining me as I stroll through Walmart, pulling that out of my ass. I feel pretty good about it. Now I'm going to go check out, and I hope everybody enjoyed this evening's little discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Thank you. Man, I'm so sorry I screwed that up. I just run out of time. But uh, that's, uh, that's where I'm at today, and I think that if you want to join me, there's some really cool shit that goes with it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome okay I, I wish I had more time guys but I'm going to get off here I hope all of you just go out there tomorrow's Monday grab life by the nose and whip its ass and every minute make a decision um, I got this that's, how, that's what I'm going to do and uh, I will see all of you soon and remember to pick up the tour book recommend it, write a review it's a good book, I'm proud of it Thanks, Brian. Have a good night. All right, y'all take care. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye Scarlett. Yeah. <laughs> she said bye. Y'all have a good night. <laughs> you too. <laughs>